It is now time for member statements. The member from York Centre. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Simcoe, sorry. And um, today I would like to uh, bring a voice uh, from the riding of York Simcoe into this House. The first-hand accounts of my constituents are very important to me, but they're also growing daily. People are telling me how getting by under the policies of this government are becoming more and more difficult. More and more constituents are telling me they can't make ends meet. Scarcity of good jobs, the cost of living, these are common themes. But my constituents say the price of electricity is causing them the most trouble. One constituent wrote, I try to conserve energy by using only one light in the house in the evening, no lights during the day, use cold water to do my laundry during off-peak hours, seldom use my dishwasher, cook meals every other night, and microwave leftovers the second night. During the winter months, I keep my house at 17 degrees Celsius during the night and from 18 to 20 during the day. Um, I open all the blinds to let sunlight in during the winter to increase heat and close blinds in the summer to keep heat out. My furnace is checked to make sure it's efficient. I must keep my house relatively cool and humid in the summer. Electrical appliances have been replaced. I expect that my hydro bill will increase by at least $100 a month next year. That number does not include any increase of hydro rates that Hydro One may get permission to add. These are re real people having these difficulties. It's important for us to recognize what we are doing to the people of Ontario. Thank you. Further statements? The member from Niagara Falls. Mr. Speaker. I'd like to rise today and discuss the passing of Niagara Falls firefighter Tim O'Day, who died in the line of duty. I want to send my condolences to his friends and family who were present at an incredible moving funeral that was held in his honour. I'd like to recognize the Niagara Falls Fire Department and the Niagara Falls Professional Firefighters Association for organizing such a moving tribute. I'd also like to thank all firefighters and emergency personnel from across the province who made their way to Niagara to pay their respects to Brother Hode. Tins pa passed away from a workplace cancer that he contacted through his years in the line of duty for his community. Tim's passing highlights how far we've come in the need to ensure that injuries that are our first responders are vulnerable to be covered, but also how much further we need to go, especially when it comes to the issue of PTSD for first responders and illness which still isn't covered. These brave men and women put their lives on the line to serve our communities, and for that, they deserve our respect. I am always proud to stand in this house and support our local first responders. This legislation has made great strides when it comes to workplace illness coverage. When it comes to our first responders who put their lives on the line for us, we should never stop working at trying to make all workplaces safer and expanding coverage to those affected by work-related illness. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today with a heavy heart to acknowledge the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide, which began on April 24, 1915. Today, on behalf of Cambridge constituents, I want to pay homage to those who perished and suffered in the Ottoman Empire. 1.5 million Armenians were killed between 1915 and 1923, and many millions more were displaced and affected by the deaths of their families and friends. Many Armenians immigrated to southern Ontario, where they contribute greatly to the diversity and vitality of our communities. This past Sunday, I was honoured to event, attend an event in my riding of Cambridge to mark the centennial of this tragedy. The event was held at the Cambridge Armenian Community Centre, the largest Armenian centre in southwest region. I was pleased to be invited by Saro Sarmazian from the Armenian National Committee of Southwestern Ontario. I was one of five MPs, two MPPs, including my, my colleague across the way, and a local city councillor who spoke in memory of the Ar Armenian Genocide. People from all around southwestern Ontario and even as far away as Michigan came to share stories from their families and contribute to the healing process. 
When we come together in remembrance of atrocities like the Armenian genocide, we take a stand against unspeakable acts of violence. So I encourage all my colleagues and all Ontarians to take a moment tomorrow to look back upon the Armenian genocide and remember those who have senselessly suffered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, thank you, Speaker. It is with great sadness that I stand with the Armenian-Canadian community here in the Ontario Legislative Assembly today to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. The systematic deportations and massacres of Armenians from their historic homelands began on the 24th of April, 1915, by order of the Ottoman Empire. Hundreds of Armenian public figures, politicians, clergymen, educators, artists were arrested and executed in the capital or sent into exile. In the next phase of the genocide, Armenian people were taken from their homes and forced to march for hundreds of miles without food and water into the Syrian desert, later to be killed. The horrendous tragedy took the lives of over one and a half million Armenians. On April 24th, people of Armenian descent all over the world recall the memorials uh, and memories of Armenian genocide, what has, what has been called the first genocide of the 20th century. This tragic history must never be forgotten, and it must never be denied. Such terrible acts of hatred cannot be tolerated in a democratic society. Just last week, Pope Francis said it was necessary and indeed a duty to remember the Armenians killed. For whatever memory fades, it means that evil allows wounds to fester. Concealing or denying evil is like allowing a wound to keep bleeding without bandaging it. Speaker, as MPP for Kitchener-Conestoga, I would like to assert that I stand shoulder to shoulder with our Armenian community as you observe this most solemn occasion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. The John McGivney Children's Centre Preschool Program in my riding of Windsor West is much too important to lose. The preschool program offers a highly specialized setting for children in their early years and teaches families best practices when caring for children with special and, in many cases, complex needs. Graduates of the program go on to the John McGivney Children's Centre School or attend a neighbourhood school, and all are proud ambassadors of this program in our community. Program participants benefit from dedicated teachers, and the preschool is placed to take advantage of the highly trained staff and state-of-the-art facilities offered at the John McGivney Centre. This one-of-a-kind program is a jewel of southwestern Ontario and services family from Windsor, Tecumseh, Essex, and even as far as Leamington. It's no wonder that when the program announced it would need to close due to a provincial funding shortfall, so many in Windsor and Essex County united to keep the program open. Whether it was young Gabby Wilkinson, who launched a GoFundMe page, Brianne Denno, who quickly started an online petition, or all of the concerned parents and community members who dropped off a signed petition at my office, it was clear that this program had the overwhelming support of the community. It is truly unfortunate that this year's class will be the last to graduate from this outstanding program. I hope everyone in this chamber can recognize the value of this program and the need to make up any funding shortfall to ensure that it can continue to service children with special needs and their families across southwestern Ontario. Speaker, it's a privilege to voice the concerns of my constituents here at Queen's Park, and on this issue, the simple and overwhelming consensus is that the John McGivney Children's Centre is just too important to lose. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Scarborough Legion Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to recognize Toronto's outgoing Chief of Police and one of Scarborough's very own, Chief Bill Blair. Yeah. Chief Blair spent his early years in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court, where he attended Sir Johnny McDonald Collegiate, known there by many as the football star Bleed. Chief Blair's 35-year policing career began as a foot patrol officer in Regent Park. He will continue on with assignments in drug enforcement, organized crime and major criminal investigations, but he never forgot his roots, eventually returning to Regent Park as Division 51 superintendent in 1995. In 1996, I met the young and energetic Superintendent Blair at a Regent Park school event. Speaking with Councillor Pam McConnell after the event, I predicted one day Bill Blair would become Toronto's chief of police. Clearly, he left his impression on me at that time. In April 2005, he was appointed as Toronto's ninth chief of police. Over his 10 years as chief, 
Bill Blair has modernized the police service, improved community relations, and supporting diversity and inclusion within the service and broader community, Mr. Speaker. And this includes being the first Toronto Chief of Police to walk in the Pride Parade and increasing the percentage of women and visible minorities employees on the force. As we thank Chief Blair for his exceptional dedications, we welcome Toronto's 10th Chief of Police, Mark Saunders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member, member from Hill. Mr. Speaker, last week we remembered the Jewish victims of the Holocaust on Yom HaShoah. Yesterday we remembered those who died to recreate the Jewish homeland on Yom HaZikaron. Today we celebrate the re-establishment of the Jewish state, the creation of the State of Israel, its Yom HaAtzmaut. My maternal grandparents traveled to the British territory of Palestine in the early 1930s with groups of their friends from Hashmer Hatzair, a Zionist youth organization, to establish one of the early kibbutz cooperatives. By planting trees, building homes, and having children of their own, these pioneers helped Israel grow into the flourishing land and democracy that we know today. We all bear witness to the result. Israel is the only true democracy in the Middle East. There are Arab members of parliament, women in the army, and those of any sexual orientation are celebrated. It's these values that Canadians and Israelis share, and these shared values that enable the unique relationship between our two great countries. It's for all of these reasons that we've come together to celebrate Israel today and why we must remain vigilant for the anti-Semitism and persecution that continues to persist. Regretfully, Al-Quds Day has been celebrated for several years on the grounds of the provincial legislature, the very institution that acts to protect the rights and dignity of each and every single Ontarian. Mr. Speaker, it is your duty to ensure that a gathering of such a reprehensible nature will not be permitted near our institution, Am Yisrael Chai. Statements? statements by members? The member from Alton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today to talk about a very special event in my riding of Halton, an event in which three chambers of commerce came together and showcased Halton's economic strength. It was also a perfect introduction to the innovative leaders we have working in our business community. The luncheon began with a speech from the Premier, our guest of honour, and the event was hosted by the Milton, Oakville and Burlington Chambers of Commerce. Our, together, these chambers represent nearly 3,000 businesses throughout Halton. They foster innovation, attract new investments, and encourage the talent, creativity, and dedication of Halton's business community to create new economic opportunities and keep our region at the forefront of economic growth. I commend the chambers on their ability to collaborate and closely work together and put on a successful event. Following the event, we had an opportunity to engage with leaders of the local business community. Leaders like Damien and Kevin, longtime friends who founded Orange Snail Brewery, Milton's first craft brewery. These two young gentlemen perfectly represent the talented, motivated, and innovative individuals who are creating jobs supporting their local communities and helping to grow Ontario's economy. These are exactly the kinds of businesses and the kinds of business owners that our government is committed to supporting, because when they succeed, Ontario succeeds. The day ended in Burlington at the Canadian-Croatian Chamber of Commerce Business Awards. Speaker, the entire day was a wonderful reminder of the strength and diversity of Halton's economic climate. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in the House today to acknowledge and congratulate the Next Ice Synchronized Skating Club, based out of the Burlington Skating Club, in my riding. This winter, I had the privilege to watch the Next Ice Novice team in action as they performed at my first annual Family Day Fun Skate at Mainway Arena. Their team motto, connected in the pursuit of excellence, is fitting if you've ever watched them glide across the ice in unison. They are the personification of grace and athleticism. On April 10th and 11th, the Next Ice senior team competed against 25 teams from 20 different countries at the ISU World Synchronized Skating Championships in Hamilton, led by coach Shelley Burnett and choreographer Ann Shelter. For the first time in six years on home ice on national television, Next Ice took home the first gold for Canada since 2009. So exciting. 
The event marked the largest crowd ever for the Synchro World Championships with over 7,000 fans in attendance. Each team is comprised of 16 skaters, and they must perform two programs and fulfill several program and technical components, making for a very entertaining event. Next Size produced two perfect skates, skating to mud by the road hammers in the short. Next Size got the hometown crowd going, performing to Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue in the free program. They skated with beautifully executed, executed lifts and clean lines from start to finish, landing them in first place as the new world champs. I speak on behalf of everyone in attendance when I say that this team and their coaches have worked so hard to get where they are today, and I congratulate each and every one of them on their recent gold medal at the ISU World Championships. Go next ice, go. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.